So for this project, I'm going to use four colours of DK yarn and a five millimetre hook. Let's get started. So start with your first colour on your hook. I like to use the darker colour in the centre, but it's totally up to you what order you do your colours in. And we're going to chain 80. One, two, three, four, Eight, nine, ten. I'm going to put a stitch marker here to help me count because I always lo lose count when I do a long chain like 80. So I'll be back in a moment. So I've got my stitch marker. Pop it through the tenth stitch. Do ten more. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm keeping them quite loose. I find that working into a tight chain is really annoying. So keep keep your chain quite loose because you're going to be working into it. Okay, so that's 20. So continue along until you make it to 80. I'm going to pause, you can pause it now and catch up with it, me in a moment. So I've made it to 80. I'm going to chain one. And then working into the chain, we're just going to do one single crochet US or double crochet UK into each chain along. So you're doing another row of 80 simple stitches. I shall continue along. And if you pause it now, we'll catch up when we've made it all the way to the end. Okay, so I've made it to the end of my row, 80 single crochets US or double crochets UK. I don't know about you, but Working into the chain is one of my least favourite things in crochet, so I'm glad that's finished. Okay, so now we're going to chain one. Turn the work. And we're going to do another row of US singles, UK doubles. But this time we're going to put two in every stitch along. So this is going to take a little while because we're doing 160 stitches. But this is what will give it its lovely curve. So go along the whole row with two stitches into each previous stitch. As you can see it's already starting to take on a curl. So a few more just to show you. There we are. See it's starting to twist. So continue along the row, two in each, and pause it now and we'll catch up in a moment. Okay, so I've made it to my last stitch, and as you can see, it's taken on its spiral shape. We're now going to change colours, and to do that, I leave, instead of finishing off the stitch, I just leave two loops on the hook. Take your next colour, pull it through the two loops and complete your stitch. I'm going to trim the grey off. Okay, so now we are going to chain two. Your new colour. It might, might be worth actually taking your two ends and just tying those in a little knot. that will keep that secure. So we've chained two, we're going to turn our work, making sure you're working on the right side up, yarn over and we're going to, working into the first stitch, we're going to do three 
treble UK stitches or double US stitches. So like a granny square. Three into that. We're going to skip a stitch and then we're going to work three into the next one. Skip and three into the next one. So we're going to continue this along the whole row. Is. And continue along and I shall meet you back at the other end. So I've come to the end of my row. I've got one stitch left there so I'm just going to work one into that. And then as I did before I'm not going to finish that stitch. I'm going to take my next colour Thread that through and finish the stitch with my next colour. I'm feeling really curly now. I'm going to snip that and tie that off so it doesn't come undone. I like to weave in my ends as I go. I've already weaved in the ends at this end, so I'll weave those in in a moment. Okay, so with your new colour, we're going to chain two. And working into the first space here, we're going to oh, turn, turn our work first, sorry. Working into the first space, we're going to do the same again. So we're doing three trebles UK or three doubles US into each space, just like a granny square. Um, what's important to note here is that I am changing the colour and turning my work on every row. This is quite important. I have made several of these, experimented with them to, to get them to look right. And if you start at the same end each time and keep going the same way, they sort of go tulip shaped. This one I have here is flat. It's nice and flat. Whereas um, if you keep going the same way, they sort of turn in like this, go tulip shaped, and they don't hang quite right. So it's always best to go to the end, turn your work and go back the opposite way. So we're doing three stitches into each space between. Want to continue along and I shall catch up with you once we've got to the end. Just wanted to show you as I got a bit further along you can see it starts to, as opposed to these really tight curls, it starts to flatten out. Now we're doing this next row and goes into a circle. It's starting to look really really pretty guys, keep going. Okay, so I've made it to the end of that row, so we're going to change our colour. Boop. I'm going to tie that off. And I'll weave those in in a moment. So for this last row, we're going to chain one, turn our work. As you can see, it's not no longer a spiral, but that's okay. It's just because that's where I'm working it and you can pop it back into the spiral at the end. So I'm going to work into my first space and do a US single UK double and then chain one. Into the next stitch, chain one. Chain one. So we're going to do that all the way around. Single crochet, double crochet, chain one, chain one, chain one. Chain one. 
and this will give you might show up better in this colour this lovely slightly bobbly edge which really adds something to the detail I think it's really pretty so that is a crochet stitch chain crochet stitch chain so I'm going to continue along and I'll meet you back at the end okay so I've made it to the end of there I'm going to snip the end and pull that through and then I shall weave in that end and then show you how to make it back into a spiral okay so you just need to lay it out really start at the bottom and flatten it unwind flatten it back into a spiral I really love these colors they're very muted tones um, this one's for my auntie and she has a a beautiful boho neutral calm living room it just looks so cute in there so there you have it you can flatten it out like that now we need to make a tassel so I'm going to show you my little IKEA hack for making a tassel I use one of these phone stands I think it was about two or three pounds in Ikea and it makes the perfect tassels so if you can get one of these really useful so you just choose a colour for your tassel I'm going to use all four colours you could just pick one of the colours but I'm going to go for all four place your yarn at the groove and then go round as many times as you feel would be suitable for a nice decent sized tassel and when it comes to tassel I cannot bear oh sorry I cannot bear a stingy tassel I like one with lots lots of ends I'm getting very tangled I do apologize okay so once you've got it sort of thick enough trim your ends to the same length as this one here and then turn it over take your colour you want to tie it with pop your crochet hook underneath oopsie and pull through your end now you can tie it in a knot around there the thing about this is these grooves made in these phone holders are evenly spaced on each side so though that's normally if you were doing this you would do that at the top there but because this is evenly spaced I shall show you now trim along there makes it nice and easy to get your scissors in you'll find that that actually is perfectly in the middle so that's my little Ikea hack okay so next you need to take a loop of yarn like so and lay it this way on your tassel hold your tassel so you have top length that you want and start wrapping the longer end of the loop around once you're happy with the amount you've wrapped it round Take your loop you created, pop your end through, find the short end of the loop and pull. And as you can see, that's pulling that loop in there. If you get your other end and pull both of them at the same time, that tightens it really nicely. 
and that's nice and secure and you can just trim that one off or weave it down in I'm going to trim it and you have yourself the perfect little really easy tassel using an Ikea phone stand you can obviously use a book or a box or anything a piece of card anything that you like to use to make your tassels but I just thought that was a handy tip okay now we want to attach our tassel to the bottom you can add some beads here if you want I've just got a neutral wooden bead that I'm going to add using my crochet hook pull that through and then I'm just going to simply take one end at a time and stitch it onto the very corner There we are, and then to hide this long end, I'm going to put it through the bead, push it through until it comes out in there, pull that down, and then do the same with the other end. Stitch it on, keep it nice and secure. And then through there it is. And down. Okay, poof that back up and then I've got some ends there. So trim those off to make them the same length and you have your tassel attached. For the hanging loop, I've just got a length of the cream colour and again through the very, very corner, I'm just going to do a simple stitch. Make sure it's about even and stitch through one more time. So it's like a little loop that you've created. Pull tight on there. You can tie that in a knot or leave it as is. I'll tie it just because I like everything to be nice and secure. And then you can choose your desired length for a hanging loop. We'll just do a simple knot to secure it there, put it nice and tight, and snip off the ends. And there you have your hanging spiral. I shall show you now this hanging up. <laughs> 